Hey guys, what's up? My name is Carlos. Welcome to Fix Your Shitty Movement. Some of you might recall I declared that March was the month that we were going to get the swing once and for all. And we did break it down pretty well. I've been delayed in continuing that series for three reasons. Uh, first of all, I learned that I've been essentially telling people that I have a short fat dick for the last like 20 some odd years. You want your forearms to be all up in Like you should be able to feel Not like feces, but you know. What the fuck you got going down there, right? Chode, that's it. Well, no. There's a disagreement about the meaning of chode. In fact, if you guys could comment and let me know what your definition is, taint is what I was trying to say. Chode and taint are not synonyms. <laughs> Still coming to terms with that. Uh, reason number two, I developed slash reignited a massive boner for Pilates, which is still raging uh, thanks to March Madness. And then uh, reason number three, uh, April basically told me to fucking bend over, so to speak. So here we are in May. Um, let's get back to it. So we are continuing with the swing, but it's kettlebell skills, yada, yada, yada. And I am going over today the two-handed clean, both the dead two-handed clean and the regular two-handed clean. Now, everybody gets very confused with all this shit, but if you just literally listen to the fucking name, it makes it pretty clear what it is. Anyway, just, you know, pay attention. So why do I introduce the clean now? Uh, well, first of all, the clean is a very important movement anyway, because it sets you up, if we're going to do the two-handed clean, uh, for goblet squats or pretty much anything else that you would do in this position. Um, also, with like the regular clean, does the same thing, right? The regular clean, meaning just the single arm clean, is one of the more despised movements because people tend to cast the bell out and it flops against them like so and it fucking hurts. Um, I call it aversion therapy. Like, if you do it well, it won't do that. Um, so, what's the problem with it? Well, it has such a smaller range of motion, like it's very contained compared to the swing. So, with a clean, whether it's two-handed or single arm, your elbow, for the most part, stays at your side. With the swing, you have an extended arm, which means there's a lot more moving parts, which means there's a lot more opportunity for you to fuck up. I say it with love and recognition in my own fuck ups because we all fucking do it. Um, so the benefit though of the two handed clean is that you aren't going to get the shit beat out of you with it, but you are going to still reflexively do um, what I want you to do at the top of your swing, the top of your clean, the top of your snatch, the top of your squat, barbell, deadlift, whatever, you mean barbell squat, deadlift, whatever, and it's to really brace yourself literally against the weight coming at you. And so in Russian kettlebell, they teach the, the plank is basically like the fundamental movement that's at the top of, you know, the swing and all those other fucking things I just mentioned. But it's really hard for people to relate those two things, right? For obvious reason, they're on the floor versus you got fucking weight flying up. So the two-handed clean or the rack position in two hands is really, very close to that plank though. Um, your elbows are bent, your lats are tight. Another reason why people, or a, a, a big reason why people um, struggle with like the gobble squat, for example, excuse me, is because they hold the bell like this. You're not gonna hold it with your hand. You have to hold it with your lats, right? So it teaches people how to use their lats without so much, like so many moving parts, right? Um, so there's a lot of really good things that you can get out of the two-handed clean. The best thing though is that it's a very intuitive movement. It's a very small range of motion in that you go from point A to point B, right? With the dead clean, the dead two-handed clean. Now I'm getting fucking, I guess I deserve that. Um, but like when I was teaching you guys the hip hinge, that means that it's really easy to track the path of the bell and that is gaining spatial awareness for especially beginners so that they can learn how to move their body with the weight, right? Which is really what um, kettlebells dictate. So you might recall with the regular hip hinge, oh, just real, I did not set up in front of a mirror to thirst trap. 
Um, it's actually serving the purpose of you being able to see what the fuck is going on back there, especially in the swing, because you might remember, well, didn't I show you? Yeah, okay. It's like all up in your shit. That way you'll be able to see it. The gray leggings are for thirst trapping. Just FYI. So with the, the hip hinge, which I don't like to do the deadlift or excuse me, yeah, I don't like to teach the kettlebell hip hinge other than to kind of start illustrating the idea of the hip hinge because it's a fucking process for people to really, really start to understand it. Um, but just to review, hips go back, right? Grab the handle, pack the lats. It's helpful for me to think about like screwing my armpits in or rotating my elbow pits forward like I'm trying to snap the handle. And then you sit your hips down and back and leverage the weight. And then come back down, right? So it's usually too low to the ground for people. It's not heavy enough for people to really get the idea. Um, and it's very awkward to hold the bell um, unless you're like a teeny tiny person. It's really fucking weird. So uh, I'll hail the barbell, the trap bar, all that shit. Kettlebell has its place, but I'm not, whatever. I'll, it's, that's, for, that's for another day. So with the two-handed clean, the setup is the same, but it's explosive. The deadlift is supposed to be pretty fucking explosive. In fact, that's one major issue that people have in their deadlift is that they don't get tension until they're at the top of their fucking first rep. And in powerlifting, that's not a great idea or not a good strategy. But with the two-handed clean, I show it to them. And although it's a very like <gasps> kind of movement like the swing, right, where people aren't even really sure what the fuck happened, it's so contained that it's much easier for them to follow it. God, I fucking hate the lightning here. Excuse me. Okay, so same thing, hinge, pull. This time when I lock out, you see how I'm in that forearm plank position pretty much? And then, and then down, and down. And so usually the first one is a little crazy because they're just getting a feel for it. It's usually a little bit of anxiety with a like ball of iron flying up towards your face. Um, but people, it's very intuitive. People into it, <laughs> how much power they have to put into the ground, out of their hips, out of their legs to catch the bell. The descent is normally what people have a problem with, but people have a problem with that in their swing too. Basically, issues that you have in any of these movements as we advance are issues that are fundamentally in your swing. They're just not showing up there. And so that's why it's not only a good idea to progress, and that means use heavier weights as you get better too, but it's it makes you go back to the drawing board every time, which you should be fucking doing anyway. And I don't care if you're doing barbells or kettlebells or whatever the fuck. We all need to work on our foundation all the time. Okay, so that was a dead two-handed clean. So now, lighting in here is pissing me off. Uh, so now the regular two-handed clean, <clears throat> which means that it's gonna be set up like the swing. I hope I don't glow in the dark the entire fucking video. It's so stupid. Win some, you lose them, right? Okay, so here, right, I have my hinge. That's right, I set up the thing. Okay. So it's the grab, tilt, drag, hike that I broke down in our initial swing tutorials. Um, so hinge, just like you would in a deadlift. Grab the handle out in front of you, tilt it on its knife edge. That's the same thing as like packing your lats that I showed you with the hip hinge. And then you're gonna use your hips to drag the bell back. So my arms aren't moving, right? I already have my lats packed. That means that wherever my hips go, my entire torso is gonna go and the bell's gonna go. So then the bell is about six inches or so in front of my toes, and then it's the hike, right? And so in the swing, right? Two-handed clean. And again, because compared to the swing, it's much more contained. Swing is out here, so you're doing all this weird shit, right? Trying to figure out where you are in space. With the clean, the two-handed clean, well, the regular clean too. Anyway, you wanna keep your elbows close to your sides. They really shouldn't drift forward at all, right? And because they have the cue to keep the bell close to their bodies, I'm gonna show you from the side, I'm out of breath from like three cleans. Anyway. 
what you'll see is that the bell stays very close to me. And then really the only cue I have to give, give them while they're doing that is to get their hips deeper, to get the bell back further. And again, it's, it works so well with the swing and it gets people comfortable with the movement of the bell, but it's that tension at the top, <clears throat> excuse me, that will make or break you. So uh, when people have issues with pretty much any of the lifts, it's because they're not bracing properly. Almost always something to do with it. This is a really fucking great way to learn bracing. This and the goblet squat, which I'm gonna go over next time, along with later some um, swing variations that I wanted to go over before, but this is a really good opportunity for that because man, does shit get weird when we get single arm. So single arm swing, some other variations, and then eventually the big clean, the main clean, and then shit from there. But goblet squat is gonna help us get a little more in depth with bracing. And um, also then you'll have your three movements that are the core movements, basically, the, the squat, the swing, squat and swing, and the clean, excuse me. That's what we're fucking talking about. Um, and that, then we're gonna have our very first like basic workout that I told you we would be doing. Um, okay, so practice. Get a fucking kettlebell and start practicing. Um, you want it to be heavy enough to wear it's some effort. I think at the very lightest for most people, 16 kilo, probably 24 kilo is the heaviest. Um, but you want it to be heavy enough to where it like pulls you back a little bit, right? And where you have to create a lot of force and explosiveness, right? Especially out of your lower body. Um, it's suitable for all three movements. Just be okay with the fact that it's probably gonna look pretty fucking stupid for a little while and that it's a constant progress, right? Learning in progress. I need to eat, fucking eat something. But it will also work your entire body with like one little tool that you don't even need a big space for that you can put anywhere and take with you anywhere. There's so many reasons to learn kettlebell, but it's the best. You're gonna have to take my word for it. Okay, practice this shit. Stay tuned for the follow-ups. Hopefully it's not gonna be any big time realizations of weird shit I've been saying my whole life. There's always some. Um, and we'll just be able to get the show on the road. My name is Karis. Thanks for watching. Fix your shitty movement. See you next time. Um, I've been delayed in continuing that series for three reasons. Uh, first of all, I learned that I've been essentially telling people that I have a short fat dick for the last like 20 some odd years. 